Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Pathway Channel. Um, this slide is about the carcinoid uh, tumor of the lung. And before we will go through this slide, uh, let's remember the WHO classification. So we have the lung into uh, neuroendocrine neoplasms. We have precursor lesions like the diffuse idiopathic pulmonary neuroendocrine cell hyperplasia. And we have the neuroendocrine tumors, which are the carcinoid neuroendocrine tumors of the lung. So today, this is our topic, the carcinoid neuroendocrine uh, tumor of the lung. And we have two subtypes. We have the typical carcinoid and the atypical carcinoid. And simply, the difference between them is about the mitotic figures. Uh, the neuroendocrine or the carcinoid uh, tumor, it can be a central or peripheral uh, lesion. And morphology now we are um, on uh, the 2.5 X. And as you can see, all this is uh, the tumor or the lesion that we have. And the pattern for these uh, tumors, it can grow in trabecular, in rosettes, uh, insular, uh, follicular, and some solid sheets can happen and it can grow in uh, nests. Um, so this is the high power. Let's go on. Uh, this is the low power. Sorry. Let's go to 10x. From this 10x, let's adjust the focus. And you will notice that we have these um, groups of uh, or groups of cells here. Like all these are the tumor cells. And we have this fine stroma with some blood vessels. And as you can see, the cells, they are uniform. You can feel that the cells, they are evenly spaced from each other. And this is actually the morphology. This is a well-differentiated, the carcinoid is a well-differentiated neuroendocrine uh, tumor on both levels, like the architecture and the cytologic features. So this is the architecture you can feel, as I mentioned, they are well-spaced from each other. There is kind of a uniformity of uh, the cells. And let's go on uh, higher power to appreciate the uh, features, the nuclear and the cytologic uh, features. So you can appreciate from this power that we have the cells and we have these cells, they have this xenophilic, uh, partially xenophilic cytoplasm and they have this uh, nucleus which is rounded uh, to oval nucleus. This is the 40X, and you feel that the cells, they are a bit polygonal or um, uh, rounded uh, uh, cells. And I hope you can appreciate from this uh, power that uh, the chromatin here is finely granular uh, chromatin. And as we mentioned, um, these are not nucleoli. Actually, this is the salt and pepper for the neuroendocrine tumors. So we can see here uh, the nucleoli. It's just the salt and pepper uh, appearance. And here we can see that the cells, they have this well-defined uh, borders. And the nucleus, it shows this rounded or um, well-demarcated uh, nuclear membrane with some margination of the chromatin He's here, as you can see. And this is the salt and pepper one. Let's go around and see if we have any uh, other features. As you can see, this is a typical carcinoid tumor. So we won't find uh, many uh, mitotic figures. If it is atypical, then we can find more than two uh, to 10 mitotic figures. But this one, I can barely find even one. And here we can see more about the salt and pepper uh, appearance for the chromatin. As you can see, it's all around in these cells. Uh, this is another uh, field for the same tumor. Uh, the cells, they are crowded, but again, you can see this salt and pepper uh, appearance. We can't see any nucleoli. Um, so this is the inconspicuous nucleoli for this uh, carcinoid uh, tumor. And again, we can't see any mitotic figures. Here we have this intervening uh, stroma with the blood vessels. And we will go now for the immune stains. Um, these cells, they have the granules that we can stain. 
And in general, the neuroendocrine uh, tumor, the carcinoid, it's positive for low molecular weight uh, cytokeratins, but lack reactivity to the high molecular uh, weight cytokeratins. Let's see here the uh, synaptophysin for this tumor. I will put it on uh, low uh, magnification just to have a view. So as you can see here, all cells, they show positive expression of synaptophysin. And let's see the other marker. This is the CD56. Uh, and again, it's densely positive for the tumor cells in this case. We have also the TTF1, which is uh, sometimes it's positive in the uh, neuroendocrine tumors. And here it is positive. We also did the, uh, just to differentiate and exclude the squamous cell carcinoma, we did the P63, uh, which is uh, negative. If, it's, if it is positive, then we can consider squamous cell uh, carcinoma, but here the tumor cells, they are all uh, negative. And would like to share with you also the KI67, though it is not part of the diagnostic criteria, but just to see that it will show a uh, low um, expression in this tumor. So let's go, this is the minimum, this is the lowest power actually. And we can see some positive cells, but it's very minimal uh, expression for this tumor. So with these features, with the low mitotic figure, with uh, the cytologic features for these cells, uh, we made a diagnosis of typical carcinoid uh, tumor for this case. And of course, we made the carcinoid tumor because of the uh, immune histochemistry, the uh, synaptophysin and the CD56 and the negativity for the P63. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please uh, share and subscribe to the channel.